This episode of Grounded in Maine is sponsored by ESG Review. ESG Review magazine is published quarterly in February, May, August, and November, and is available for free in print and digital formats. ESG Review is devoted to environmental, social, and governance strategies, technologies, and investments. ESGReview.net is updated every Wednesday with eight new stories and is home to feature articles, news, items, and more. Visit ESGReview.net to stay informed and help us spark the collaboration and awareness needed to develop sustainable economies and communities around the world. There's a place where there's no trouble, no more pain, no more struggle. Hi there. Thank you so much for listening to Grounded in Maine today. My name is Amy Fagan. My guest today is Everett Hamner. He's a journalist in Canada. He also has his own podcast and he is a super sustainable person. And I'm going to let him tell you more about all of that. Uh, It was really fun to um, just kind of show him, show him kind of what I see uh, as far as sustainability, because when we first talked to was like, I don't feel like I do that many sustainable things. My sister is super sustainable, but um, so just to, just to kind of open his eyes to, you know, the, even just the little things that, that all add up. I, I'm going to have him tell you all about this. Uh, I don't want to hold you up. Um, But if you love this podcast, please feel free to share it with a friend or someone who is, might be interested in the subject. Uh, Feel free to rate and review. There are lots of places that you can do that. Subscribe. It all helps to um, just gain some traction for the podcast to bring bring it to people's eyes and ears, of course. Uh, but so Good Pods is a great place to do that. If you leave a review, I will definitely respond to you. If you um, subscribe, I certainly appreciate that. If you hate the podcast, please let me know. Uh, This is um, always a work in progress and this is supposed to bring value. So if it's not bringing you value, let me know so that I can change that. If you have anything to share on the podcast, I would love to have you. I'd love to chat. Uh, Feel free to send me a message anywhere. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn and Twitter, and you can also go to my website and send me, you know, find me and send me an email. I'm pretty, I'm pretty accessible and I always respond. But thank you again so much for listening. Everett's information is going to be in the show notes and I hope you enjoy this episode. Today, my guest is Everett Hamner. He is a friend of mine from a podcast group called Numospect. And uh, Everett actually has a podcast of his own. It is called The Plot Twist, and it is really fun. Everett, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. Looking forward to the talk, Amy. Yes. So tell us about The Plot Twist. The Plot Twist, as you said, is my podcast. It says it's The Plot Twist. It's a podcast about movies. It's pretty simple. Uh, Just like sustainability is a big uh, wide net, movies is a big wide net. So I don't try and talk about anything too niche. Um, I love movies. I love going to movies. I love talking to people about movies. Um, And sometimes I, my friends, it's, you don't know if, oh, Everett's just talking about movies again. Well, you start a podcast and you feel like you're talking to people and you don't you don't feel bad and people are just a way to somewhere to like put my thoughts down about movies so um i've been having a lot of fun with it um thank you very much for listening um, everything from anticipated movies to top 10 movies to um, movie thoughts trivia. on movie reviews different subjects movie trivia fun the facts oscars I love- uh, fun facts the oscars awards season anything and everything i'm i'm all about movies so that's awesome that's kind and of you've had a, what, what the plot twist is you've had a big month with the awards lately yes yeah just kind of coming down after awards season there was it was a lot and um yeah but april big month for movies a lot of big name movies coming out this month so 
really excited to get watching more movies and putting out some more episodes. Ooh, I can't wait to hear about it. I have no idea what's going on in the real world <laughs> with movies. Um, I just wait to hear from you. Uh, but I think that's really cool because... I mean, having your own podcast, because I'm sure if you're anything like me, you start talking about something that you're really jazzed about. And there are friends of yours that maybe don't like to talk about movies. I, I'm sure there there are people in my world that must just like eyes glaze, glaze over like, oh, boy, here it comes again. Uh, yeah. But yeah, at least, you know, if someone's listening to your podcast, you know that they're into it. Yeah. And, you know, if you have that back and forth with people, that interaction, that's really fun. It's like making new friends and exactly yeah it's it's um you definitely do have those types of uh, moments with your friend groups they're like all right just take take a breath everett take a <laughs> my husband is one of those people he's like oh boy are we going to talk about this again and he doesn't say that but you just you can see it in yeah. his face you're like oh sorry I'm, i'll stop i guess um yeah or like i'll ask um with my girlfriend watch a movie i'll be like did you like the movie yeah and she'll be like yeah it was good and I'd be like, oh, like in my head, but that's not enough. I need more me. than he that. Knows, he knows that's not an, ex not that it's not acceptable, but then I'm like, but like, what did you like? And then, so she's gotten better. Not that she needed to, but she knows that, you know, right? um, yeah. She's like, oh, so she'll. Yes, isn't people. good enough. Yeah. <laughs> I was entertained. Isn't that what movies are about? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh gosh, that's so fun. And so I'm I'm really curious because I know you were a journal a journalist. So yes. does that have anything to do with I don't know what you were a journalist of? Uh, so I was a news reporter, news anchor for like local news radio station. And I also did a sports broadcasting, uh play by play for hockey, basketball, uh, oh my gosh. football, all those types of things. So um the trans the transition to a podcast, I didn't have that hurdle of recording audio or editing audio or anything like that and the news reporting really you know requires you to think critically of things analyzing so i think all those types of you know that background really com combined to being able to be confident enough or want to do a podcast right wow <clears throat> that's really cool i i wish i had more of that <laughs> <laughs> But you just, you know, you, you came into the podcast with like confidence because you've been doing it and it's not like that big of a deal. Um, well, it's just a confidence difference in the fact that I know that I, I'm confident in my ability to record and understand audio levels, those types of things. Oh, okay. There's still a big learning curve in the podcasting world. I don't pretend to think that I know anything and everything about it. I listen to a lot of podcasts, but. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's also different when it's something that you care about. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, is anybody going to listen? And, you know, what should I talk about? And yeah, I get that totally. Pre-podcast, before yeah. the podcast, like, were you working and thinking, oh, man, if I could do something like this with movies, like, you know, how did you decide to do a podcast about movies? Was it that you just couldn't stop talking about it? And people were like, please talk to somebody else. <laughs> I think I... I just decided to just kind of go for it and do it. It's something that I guess I've always, I've thought oh, I could start a podcast. And then for years past, I've kind of, I started my own little blog website where I would write my own reviews, spoiler free reviews on movies that I'd seen and did like top 10 countdowns and just put it out on my own personal social media or people that I would work with, send it out. Um, oh my gosh. And that's then, fun. So I just kind of had, I'm like, well, I've, done a lot of some of like the prep work in a way of researching and writing things down and thinking about different formats so it was just kind of almost like the final piece was just pushing that record button which is a huge hurdle in the podcasting world it is you you think you can do it and then it's just like the anxiety of oh, I gotta put together an episode right yeah <clears throat> um I love that. And I love that it's, I, I had this, this thought in my head that because you were a journalist, it would be easy for you, but it's interesting to hear that it's, it's, you have that same feeling no matter what you yeah. were doing before. So thank you. That's awesome. <clears throat> and so this is a podcast about sustainability. Uh, so let's get to that. And I, I want to just uh, say how fun it is getting to know you and getting to 
know more about your sustainability habits. Cause I know when I first mentioned to you, you're like, oh no, no, I'm not really, that's, I don't do a lot of sustainable things. But then you were saying after we talked about it a little bit, you were like, oh, you know, oh, we yeah. do do this. We do this. And you're just like, you're just throwing it out at me when we were, pre when we were doing this pre pre-record. <laughs> so, so you live in an apartment or do you have a house in Canada? We, we rent, um, a house. We have the whole main level of the house. Okay. Yeah. And, um, what kind of a backyard do you have? Cause you said that you garden. Yeah. So we have neighbors upstairs and so we share the backyard, but we, um, our gar our backyard is very, very shaded. So we do have a backyard and there is like a garden section where we could do some gardening, but we do, we put all of our um, vegetable garden and all those types of things out on the front porch, just because it gets way more sun. Um, and the front porch is kind of ours. So we don't have to, not that we're worried about our, you know, hogging the garden with our neighbors. Uh, we have a really good relationship with them, but the, we have the, the front porch is where is our portion. So it's kind of our space and we can get as creative as we want with it. Um, and it gets more sun. So right. all of our gardening, we do in pots on the front porch or the front uh, walkway. Oh, I love that. The container garden. Yeah. Cool. Well, and then if it's on your porch, you can just like step out in your underwear and just like water <laughs> if needed or grab a tomato. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's my steps, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Um, Disclaimer, I do not do that. <laughs> I just want to say for the record, <laughs> I can't say that I don't do that. But uh, so that's really fun. And so I know you uh, we were talking about composting also. And yes. I um, but you so you said that uh, you guys you save it and you bring it you bring it to the community gardens. Yes. Yeah, so our city, we don't have an official um, composting or green box program where you can put it out with your recycling or anything like that. Uh, but the city that my girlfriend lived in did have one so she growing up that was just a natural practice for her and her family of composting and saving food scraps and things like that and not that I my family we wouldn't have done that we we had a compost at one point in the backyard but it wasn't just because it was more of an it's more of an effort when you have to seek it out and do it yourself right um so we did some research when we moved in together and she came uh to my city and ask about composting, we found that there's community organizations that have composting available. So we got our own um, composting bin and we save our food scraps. And then when it's filled up, then we just, the next time it's convenient, we drive over and um, donate the food scraps and they use it for community gardens and things like that. Just what it's a big community garden area. So do they have like a big compost bin there then? Yeah. So um, it's gated, but they have a bin at the side of the road that you can just uh, drive up and put it in whenever's convenient to you. It's just, That's it awesome. doesn't, yeah. So we just, doesn't matter when it is, just drive over and dump the, dump the compost in and really cuts down on our food waste. Like our, since we, when I started it, honestly, probably about half what we've noticed was like our just straight food waste. So really works in cut, cutting down on garbage going to landfill right that's awesome what a great thing that she taught you yes one of many she teaches me many great things that's really cool though it's, it sounds as almost like it was a deal breaker for her like no composting is not composting isn't an option yeah like this is not gonna in, a, in a way yeah she said we're like this is an option we're gonna do it i'm like okay we'll do it yeah. that's very cool and now how come you don't have a compost bin in your house is it because it's not your like you, because you share the yard. Yeah, it's since we rent, like, and you can't. I don't know if we. I mean, our landlord's great. I'm sure if we wanted to, we could. Um, but we just. That's. I, don't, I guess I don't really have a firm answer why we don't. But yeah. Oh, I think it's great that I mean, your the community gardens are going to benefit from that, and that's very yeah. cool. Have you used the community garden, or do you get no, to enjoy that? No, it's that? the community. It's on the other side of the city, so it wouldn't be super convenient to go there and use that garden. Um, and we, when we, what we grow in pots on our front porch and that is definitely sometimes more than what we need, so. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. 
Uh, and so while we were talking before the record, uh, we were also talking about the fact that you really like to cook. And so part of that is making your own broth as well. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. That just the fact of um, one of the things I love is it's getting is vegetable garden and herb garden herb. I love my herbs. And so the fact just I can grow to the front porch and clip off a handful of parsley or leaves of basil to go in a recipe or something. It just fresh herbs really elevate a dish to the next level for me and all herb, if they grow together they go together i say so clip it off and it just adds it really elevates the flavor profile um and yes uh, making broth is certainly something that i have done over the years um more around the time of big holiday meals if the bone in ham get a ham broth or uh turkey around thanksgiving or things like times like that christmas mm -hmm. make it make some turkey broth um again just an easy way that you have the you have all the tools right there you've already bought done all the work of cooking through cooking the ham eating the ham and instead of just before you compost the the meat meat scraps just simmer it in a big pot get some salt pepper um, some celery carrots put that in and then just simmer it away on low for bring it to a boil and simmer it away on low for a few hours and then strain it and store it. And you've got some delicious homemade broth for soups and nothing like a soup. Heck season. Yeah. And you know, everything that's in it. Yeah, exactly. There's no, there's no wondering about, you know, chemicals or how it was processed or where, ingre where the ingredients really came from. You, you know, where they came from. Right. And so do you make a big batch of broth and then just like freeze it? I, Sometimes when I'm making a broth, I'll end up using it to make a soup, say the next, within the next few days. Um, so uh, don't really have, again, just in a renting, we don't have a lot of space in a freezer to be freezing broth, but right. um, certainly something that you can do, definitely. Yeah, we have, um, we have a freezer in our basement and I like one at the door that, it ha you know, they have the little I don't know, ledges so things don't fall yes. off. The door is all broth. <laughs> Love it. Um, because I make a lot of soups and I I make a lot of broth. <laughs> so I do like a, we have an instant pot and I think it's six quarts. So I just, yep. I top it up. So you're, you know, you have a meal with like ham or turkey or chicken or whatever. And then you use that to make a broth. So you're getting like extra meals. Exactly. Which is so cool. You're extending your meals. You're you're using natural ingredients, and it costs you nothing. Mm -hmm. so, which it's is really, so cool. And it, I always, when you make food yourself, I mean, it is fresher, but you just it mentally, I feel like it just feels better eating freshly made food that you made yourself. So again, when you're having the soup, and instead of um, you know, you can get that the powdered broth where you add water or you get those cartons of broth, which still taste good and they taste great. And mm -hmm. I use them a lot, too. But when you make it with fresh made broth, something about it just savors a little more with every spoonful. Absolutely. I, as much as I love movies, I, you could argue I could probably argue I love cooking and talking about cooking more growing up. If I wasn't watching uh, Sports Center, I was watching the Food Network. So that's what I do when my husband's away yeah food tv all the time <laughs> boy we'll have to talk cooking sometime too uh because that's really fun but so you garden and you I, and you're container gardening which is even cooler i love that because that is one of those that's one of those things with people renting or in the city they're like oh i don't have a yard for a garden but um but you can totally do it you can just get the pots and pots require do they require less water or do they require more water do you know? So I would, I mean, I don't have the scientific answer. I think that they require uh, more constant watering because the the soil is contained in a pot and it's not going to be getting water from moisture from the ground or anything like that. And depending on the um, type of plant, like tomatoes are very, very thirsty. Mm -hmm. So they will absorb, almost have to water those like every day. Um at least last year we did. It was a hot, a lot of sun last year here. 
Um, so I think that you have to be more attentive to container gardening just because um, it's such a confined space and the roots are going to seek out and the plants will seek out that water mm -hmm. and they're not going to be able to, to get it from the ground. Um, that's just my theory on it. Right. But then on the other side of that, you have less weeds. Yeah, less <laughs> weeds. Yeah. And I can move the plants if I feel that they're, if you see after a certain t t period, oh, if I move it five feet over here, I can get a little bit more sun or a little more sheltered from the wind, maybe something True. like that. So a lot, well, I've done that a lot too, where you just kind of change up if a plant's not doing very well, I'll move it to a more sunny spot and for a couple of weeks and then it bounces back or vice versa. I notice some plants, if it's out in too, too much sun, even though gardening vegetables need a lot of sun, can't give them too much, very temperamental. So um, mm -hmm. you get some, a little bit of flexibility that way. That's a big, that's a big plus though, for container gardening. You just yeah. follow the sun. Uh, exactly. That's, I did not think about that. That's very cool. Um, Let's see. Uh, and I'm trying to remember if there was another thing that you were talking to me about with sustainability. Uh, so we talked about composting and gardening and broth making. Thrift store. Thrift store. That was the other one. How can I forget? Uh, and that's that's not necessarily yours, but you can you can talk about Julia's thing. <laughs> Yes, uh, my girlfriend's name is Julia. She is a big thrift, big fan of thrift stores, loves thrift store shopping um, and just going there. And uh, I go with her sometimes. Thrift stores, uh, not, as you said, not so much my thing, but I definitely, the, the principle of a thrift store, I definitely appreciate. Um, and she'll come home with lots of different treasures, lots of different, and honestly, the value that you can get at thrift stores um, especially the one near our house. Like if you like vases are so expensive, you know how many vases are at thrift stores oh for not gosh. even close to the amount of money, but it just, you clean it up and you'd think it was a brand new vase, right? So things like that, I notice. I'm like, of course, like that makes so much sense when the price of everything is going up nowadays, right? So uh, economically thrift stores are, are a big deal, um, are a big help. And so a lot of things in our apartment here are different thrift store finds. So that's awesome. That's really cool. And it's so true about, I'm going to say bosses, but um, I yeah, don't. <laughs> potato, potato. I, don't... <laughs> I, I can't even say it. Um, but it's so true about that because they're so, they are very expensive and there are so many different sizes. And if you're, you know, why do you need to buy a brand new one if there's a perfectly good one right there? I mean, it's just going to, it's going to, that's not what you're buying them for anyway. You're wanting no. to hold the beautiful flowers. Yeah. So. That was just one of my observations. And I'm, when I'm looking there, I'm like, look how many there are. And they're, they're all like under $5. When I know you go to a flower store or a garden store and you, you look at them, they can be 40, 50 bucks. And you're like, why? Right. Right. Why would yeah. you do that? Yeah. Why would you do that to yourself? And then, you know, you're, you're just, because you know that someone else is going to bring their vase to the thrift store. And yeah. um, so you're, you're helping to make room for a new one, exactly. a new, a new one that they're going to sell to someone else who is a thrifty. My grandmother called the thrifty. She called it the thrifty. Um, and uh, there is, there are so many things that, I know there are lots and lots and lots and lots of dishes at our thrift store. Yes, for um, sure. And then I, so I've looked for like, uh, like trays and yep. uh, like mixing bowls and stuff like that. Cause I want to, I want to um, learn to do uh, make soap and you have oh. to purchase, you have to have like a separate, everything that you use for soap, you can't use any, you know, you can't use for cooking. So you have to buy new stuff. Mm. by its own you know it has to have its own stuff um so i've looked for that and you know a, a separate pot and all this stuff so i i do totally get that and good for her to like take that on and and to teach you that as well yeah definitely i as i said a lot of good practices and lessons so um 
it's kind of like with sustainability i find as you said at the top it's like it can be a big intimidating word and when you say it's not an all or nothing practice right it's something where you can be doing one or two things and that's your sustained Every, everybody's got to start somewhere right so you get the ball rolling you're rolling that snowball you keep pushing it maybe it'll get bigger and you'll pick up more things so totally totally and that's actually something that um that i've read and i've seen uh that you know you'll start you'll start with something small and then that will be it will become like breathing like second nature it's not something that you even think about and then you're like oh i could totally take something else on because i this isn't like nothing you know yeah. like making broth or you know something yeah. like that you know it's no big deal while you're doing that you know you can pick something else up like I'm, making soap have have yeah, julia find cool. you some stuff and we'll make some soap all right Bree can teach us how to make soap <laughs> love it um, but that's really cool. And so does she do, um, like antiques as well, or is it mainly thrift because it's cheap, which is um, a okay. I'd say probably maybe both. Like she'll just look for little trinkets. She'll come home treasures. She likes to call them, um, uh, or just different. Like we had, um, some friends over back in the summer for a, a garden party and got a bunch of, um, old antique type of plates but they had like all different flowers around the outside and she went over the course of say like a month at different times and picked them up and they were like 75 cents a dollar things like that and they're adorable and that's so fun yeah so things like that so in a way yes definitely has found some like um antique type of things but more so just to just to see what there is to see really right it's it can be fun if you have, yeah. you know, if you have that time, it's, it's, it can be really fun. And it's so, that's so cool that she found those, those fun plates and it's just like, it's cheery and it's special. And it also yeah. like was almost nothing, you know? Exactly. Right. And it, 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 it's, I don't want to say upcycling, but you know, it's just can, extending the life of something that somebody thought was either out of style for them or they no longer needed. You never know. You always, so you wonder the stories behind some of those things. Oh right? boy. Oh yeah. boy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I mean, I totally think about that. Like, I wonder what this was used for. Yes. You know, what, what where they... were you? What life, what tales do you know? Distant traveler of this plate. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, <clears throat> all right. So <sighs> Everett, uh, when I say the word sustainability, I know that you said it's a big word and it doesn't have to be a big deal. It's, but what does that what does that word mean to you? I guess when I think of sustainability, the word sustainability to me, I think it it m makes me think of just being more aware of the impact of me on the environment or the world um, and how I could reduce the impact of what I'm doing. Are there more ways that I can be more uh, smarter with my waste practices or how can I minimize, I guess, sustainability, minimizing waste would probably where my head goes first, mm -hmm. um, just thinking of the word. And then after that, I'd kind of go to my, you know, gardening, make your own, grow your own food, make your own, um, help to make your own meals, things like that. So that would be what I think of when I think of the word sustainability. Absolutely. That is, um, that's right up my alley. That's awesome. Uh, and so just to, to wrap this up, I mean, that's, it's just, it just makes me giggle a little bit when you're like, oh, I'm not really sustainable. My sister is though. <laughs> My sister is um, way more, has a lot more sustainability practices than I do. And which is great. Like that when, when you said that, I'm like, well, I'm not sustainable, but my sister is. But yeah. then when you realize it, well, I am too. Yeah. Look at all this, these things that you're doing. Yeah. I love, I love the, um, you know, when you're making your own, like there, it's not even just, um, you know, making your own because I, I have seen, I work in, uh, I work in healthcare, and so I've seen in the last 
you know, since I've been working in this, uh, a lot of the, the like baby boomers and older people are having all these illnesses coming up. And, and I, I can't help but think, you know, when they were younger, smoking was pushed on them and the, the, the meals of convenience were like pushed on them. Like these things are so cool. Like the women are going to work now and everyone's working and no one has time for that. But look at these things take you 10 minutes, <laughs> you know, just yeah. add water. <laughs> Exactly. And, and not not pointing out the fact that they have, you know, artificial dyes and and, you know, sweeteners and preservatives and chemicals and, you know, and so now all these, you know, a lot of people are, are coming up with illnesses and I can't help but think maybe that has something to do with it. I, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor, so I don't know, but it just makes me wonder, you know, the whole like, what's the story behind that plate? But like, right. you know, this I wonder you know, what their habits were as they were younger and, you know, like stuff like that. Um, but so this has been super fun. I, I love getting to know you a little bit better and getting a little bit more background uh, and getting to uh, pull a little bit more sustainability out of you. And how about that? Like, that's a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, no, of thank you for having me. I've <laughs> had a blast. I, I just like talking, connecting with people. So even just having a conversation with someone for this amount of time has been great, but yeah, absolutely. This is um, a, a really good opportunity to, to learn more about sustainability and different practices and uh, listening to the podcast. I listened to the last episode about um, the woman with the um, lived in the, has the tiny house and things like that. So oh. just like little things like that. I, it's just the podcasting community and, you know, online, you can just learn so much from little people and, you're not going to do everything, but if you get can pick up a couple two percent of what somebody else does at a hundred percent, then you're two percent more sustainable. Absolutely, absolutely. So Everett, um, if somebody wants to look up your podcast or learn more about you, where is the best place for someone to find you? Yes, the Plot Twist Podcast. We are on pretty much every podcasting platform um, that I know of. So um, Spotify, Apple Music. Um, Amazon Music, all the major podcasting platforms. Just search The Plot Twist Podcast. Um, we are on Instagram, Facebook, at The Plot Twist Pod. Also on Twitter. Um, find us there. I have links to the episodes on the different platforms. And I like to put different content out on social media, on Instagram, every Friday, Fun Fact Fridays, just different things like that. Um, so lots of different places where we are. Right. And with all the the exciting stuff coming up in April, people yes. should be checking in to find out yes. more. A lot of big movies coming out. John Wick 4, the Super Mario movie, the movie about Air, about the Nike signing Michael Jordan as their um, star endorser. There's so, oh, wow. there's so many other movies and a lot of there's a big year for movies that I'm excited about. So that's listen very to the cool. podcast. Follow yeah. along. Listen to the podcast, learn out of all, I'll learn all about it. I will be doing the same. <laughs> cool. And I will have all this information in the show notes. So Everett, thanks so much for hanging out with me. We will be watching. Thank you very much, Amy. I just want to take a moment and thank my guest again for speaking with me and sharing such great information. Uh, I also need to thank Buzzsprout for hosting this podcast, for Jane Bolduck and her amazing music genius, for Becca Coffron and her beautiful artwork. And I'd like to thank you for listening. Please check out the show notes. Um, I'm going to have links posted in there if you would like to follow this guest and learn more about them. Thank you again. We'll talk to you soon. There'll come a day My mama told me When I find love To have and hold me A heart that's strong And so sincere Just tell me how do I get there From here Oh tell me
will heal the pain with sweet forgiveness. Wages of war will disappear. Just tell me how do I get there from here? I wonder. Tears and wonder. 